Hello, this is Bruce, and today we're going to talk about Link Master and um, how it's used and how it might fit your uh, network testing needs. <clears throat> so let's first start by talking about how Link Master is a little bit different than perhaps other uh, network testing tools you've used before. There's three basic um, application type testing. The first is an application layer where you're going to look at call performance um, or voice quality testing. You might look at specific data testing like uh, throughput or text messaging, SMS testing. There's another class of product out there that looks at um, network performance coming from the diagnostic mode, so the DM information. Uh, from this you're going to get modulation scheme or resource block allocation, um, handover information or layer 3 information. Um, this real low-level information <clears throat> is really important. Um, you also can look at the TCP IP analysis. You might look at Wireshark for that or SIP analysis. So traditionally you might have three different applications or three different testing software products to look at each of these different groups. Um, but what Link Master will do is it'll sit right there in the middle <clears throat> and we'll be able to look at call performance testing and also modulation schemes simultaneously or look at um, TCP IP layer while you're looking at uh, the layer 3. Um, and that can, becomes really important when you're trying to troubleshoot really more complex problems that are in your network. It also is an important tool that will take you um, from the lab um, into the field. So if you're doing device testing, <clears throat> you might want to look at uh, specific things that are happening inside of the, um, uh, of the controlled environment in a lab. <clears throat> but you also might want to take it out into the field and do real traditional drive testing. So look at how does the device interact with the network or perhaps what's going on in the network um, that's either uh, uh, helping the device or causing problems. And there's two products that we have. One's called LML, which is Link Master Logging. And the second is LMA, which is Link Master Analysis. So logging tools, what you're going to use to collect the data. And the analysis tool is going to be what you've got back at the office to, um, to do the deep dive analysis. So let's talk a little bit about <clears throat> how the data looks. Um, this is a couple snapshots from some drive uh, that I did here between San Jose and San Francisco. Um, real traditional drive test type work. <clears throat> this route I took um, north up 280, um, got up to San Francisco and came back south. And you'll, you'll see this is in LMA, the post-processing tool. The little dots that we have here, um, these are cell site locations. So you also have the ability to um, put down cell sites to help you. And that will become really important towards the end of this uh, talk, um, where you can look at how do cell sites um, um, identify network-related problems for you. <clears throat> you can also grab uh, histogram views. So what was my RSRP distribution um, over this uh, set of drives? So um, what was my average, but also what was how did, how did it fit into different buckets of, um, of performance here? We do a lot of Volte testing, and so let me talk about how we do um, specifically the Volte with um, uh, MOS scores or voice quality testing. So, so Link Master will run either on a laptop computer or on a tablet. Um, I typically will run like a Microsoft Surface tablet. It's a nice lightweight product. Um, it can handle um, all of the, the phones that we have connected. Um, and there's this small little box. It's called, um, and there's two products that are uh, important here. The, the, the first one's called the two unit or the Link Master Volt box. And the second is the PM12 which will allow you to do 12 devices simultaneous. But we're going to stick for this demo on um, just the two-unit two box. And you have two phones plugged in. <clears throat> so 
So two mobile phones, typically Samsungs or LGs or Huawei's or um, any of those, they can be the same manufacturer, but they don't necessarily have to be. And these are the two mobile devices you're gonna use for mobile to mobile testing. And the idea inside of this audio box, um, you're gonna inject or um, take an audio clip, a WAV file, and after you've set up a call between the two phones, we can programmatically control these phones. Um, so you'll set up a call between them, and then we'll inject a voice um, through the ear jack into the first phone. That will then get sent uh, through the Volte network, and the second phone will receive that voice clip. So these are typically seven second clips that get sent between the phones. Um, and then, <clears throat> Once we've received that voice clip back, um, as you can see up here on the right, um, the little white squiggle lines, these are the voice that was sent from one phone, and the blue squiggle lines here are the voice that was received. So we can now overlap, overlay the wave file of, of the reference sample, what was sent, with the reference or with the received voice that was received. And um, from that, create a MOS score. Uh, and we use the Polka standard for that MOS score. Um, so these are industry standards. And in this case, the, the 2.52 is the MOS score. Um, the number in parentheses here, that's the, um, the audio, uh, the level, the audio level, so the, the, the volume. But then the number below it <clears throat> is the mouth to earpiece delay. So that gives you the the timing that it took. How long, how many seconds or milliseconds did it take to send a word from one phone to the other phone? So in this case, it was just over half a second. And in this one, it was somewhere between uh, 0.46 or 460 milliseconds and about uh, 480 um, milliseconds. All of these log files are stored locally. Um, so they're available for you for immediate analysis. Um, and we can also um, take our log files and convert them back um, either into QXDM format. So you, if you're working with, uh, with an OEM and you need to share files uh, with them to troubleshoot a specific um, device problem, you can share with them in, in that original file. We support a lot of different LTE chipsets and you can do them simultaneously. So you can have a Samsung Note 4 that's working on a Qualcomm chipset, talking to a Samsung GS6 that uh, might have a, a Samsung chipset in it. These are LTE chipsets and we do support Qualcomm, Samsung, LG, Altair, uh, GCT. Um, new chipsets are getting added all the time. Um, uh, so, so it's important to, to keep, up, keep up with these, um, these latest chipsets. From a reporting standpoint, we can talk about these application layer testing. Uh, the first one is just uh, very quickly, you can generate automated call results. So what percentage of the calls were complete? What percentage of the calls had origination failures? What percentage of the calls um, had drop calls, things like that. We can look at how was the distribution of your MOS score? What percentage of your calls were um, greater than a score of 3.5? What percentage were greater than a 4.0 um, over the drive? <clears throat> and this one is uh, the call setup. So when you're doing Volte testing, uh, when you're setting up a call, you're communicating with the IMS and uh, for that call setup. So this is over the data layer. So you're not monitoring the layer three information for um, call setup. So this is the time between when you hit the send button on the phone to when you get either the 200 OK message back that says the call is set up, or uh, we have another message we can also pull from, which is the timing for the first RTP packet. Um, and this is really important in order to, to figure out how long are your customers waiting when they hit the send button to when the other phone accepts the call and answers answers it. How long does it take to set up the call? In this, uh, in this sample here, we, most of the data is between four seconds and six seconds. But we also had uh, a fair number here that were greater than 10 seconds. So um, 
So this lets you dive into, from here we can now dive into uh, identifying what was the problem related to those 10 seconds and you'll see in a second where how we can do that. When you look at the data in this format, and this is some pretty low level information, um, but it shows you where some of that data comes from. So um, the column on the left shows the timestamps and you'll notice these are down to the millisecond level. So these are coming directly from either the Qualcomm chip or the Samsung chip. And this is when a call gets started. So the phone starts in idle mode. So we see paging messages. These are layer three messages, uh, paging messages. And then um, we get a SIP message. And that invite message is the first indication that the call will get started. So this is at the, the uh, uh, comes in from the, from the Volte client. And you'll see then from that, um, I'll step back just a minute. So from that, you'll then get a bunch of layer three messages, service request message, connection request message. These are all the layer three. So we're setting up that RRC connection. All of those layer threes to set it up. So we're, in this case, we're going moving from that paging stage uh, to the connection stage. Uh, a little further down, we now get the trying message here. <clears throat> when we get the session progress message, and then finally at the bottom, we get the 200 OK message, so in the PRAC uh, right above it. So by interlacing the layer three and the TCP IP layer, we can get timing related to um, all the call setup and all of the protocol that happens um, in that message. Here, this is just a snapshot of a very typical or common report that we generate. Um, and each row in this case is a single call test. So, um, and what we do is, let's say we made 100 calls over this period, each row being a call. If I look at this conversation, this says um, 5.6 seconds between when I pushed the send button to when we um, get that first RTP packet back. So, so from here, we also break it down into all the different levels of from the invite message to a session progress message or the invite message to the 200 OK message. And so if there are times when a message, when a, a call setup goes above 10 seconds, we can then go and look into it. Once the call is established, we can look at RTP analysis. So how many um, packets were dropped? <clears throat> In this case, we had 17 packets were, were dropped. Uh, what was the RX jitter, what was the delay, average, and start pulling out um, statistics on each of the calls. So this also allows us to deep dive into um, analyzing why we get poor, poor voice quality on certain calls. So, so this is a time graph view. So over time we were doing uh, MOS scores for Volte calls. And you can see we were doing really well here, 3.8, 3.9, and suddenly we dropped down to 2.63. Then we'll go back up. Uh, second example uh, where we drop down and go back up. Um, we save all of those WAV files. So if you wanted to uh, listen to them, uh, you can. Uh, so you can hear exactly where those voice, uh, those voice problems occurred. They uh, missing parts of the speech? Are they um, a staticky? There's lots of conditions that could cause those poor scores. But, but what this allows you to do is um, within LMA, the post-processing tool, we can now really understand what was going on. So the, the top graph, these are all time graph views. The top graph is shows the MOS value. <clears throat> and we can see that's where we dip down, right up in here. The, the time or the graph below it, I pull out the sign R value. So I'm showing at exactly the same point in time, my sign R value is down to about zero or even below that, a negative value. So, so we know we're in an area of, um, of pretty poor RF conditions. I also pull the RSRP value and from here we can see we're down in the neg 95 region, which isn't horrible. Uh, we certainly should be able to keep a call active for that. Um, I look at the jitter. The jitter is actually pretty stable here, down in 25 or so milliseconds, 20 milliseconds. 
but it really jumps out at me at this next one. We see a significant increase in the RTP um, delay. So we go from a delay of about 200 milliseconds, then it jumps up to 1.4. So this is 1.4 seconds of delay, uh, which causes uh, that real drop in MOS score. And the last one I, I tied into this time graph is the PCI. And we, what we see in this case is lots of hopping or jumping around of those PCIs in this area. So the, the device was having a hard time locking into a specific uh, sector. And we finally get, go ahead and get stable here. But what's, what's also nice is that um, in LMA, when I'm looking at this analysis, if I have a time graph open with a, um, a specific point in time, this red line is, represents a, a point in time, it locates for me on the map this little blue circle here. So it tells me where I was in that location and it does a, a trace line. This green line here is a trace line going back to my serving sector. So I can identify where exactly I was having trouble and what sectors were I talk, was I talking to at the time. So we can then identify this poor MOS score as being related to network conditions. So um, packet delay caused by uh, PCI hopping and poor SINAR values. Um, so interference. And so this is going to be an area that um, the network will want to go out and see if there's some optimization that can happen in that area. This next graph really shows the power of what the cell site locations can do for you. So here, uh, this is towards the top end of that drive I showed you earlier, where we're up in San Francisco and we're driving north. Um, we get up the peak and then we come back down south. All I've done is I've clicked on this sector 155 and it will draw trace lines for me. So it'll draw the location of where that sector was serving. Um, and what we can see <clears throat> is that as I was driving south um, for this area here, there was a section of time when I was getting served by a back lobe of 155, when I should have been served by this 198 that was pointing um, right up at it. So, uh, so visually, when you can see things um, so quickly uh, by just clicking on the sector and these trace lines come out, you can identify areas where you need to improve down tilts or look at shielding or look at um, antenna locations um, to, to reduce the amount of um, network resources that are consumed with moving around so quickly. On the right side, we have just easy identification of calls. So here's a, a whole bunch of um, drop calls or termination failures in a specific area. Each of these little dots shows me where that happened. So now I can go dig into, um, dig into what's going on there. So in closing, LinkMaster is a very powerful tool uh, for data collection and data analysis that will give you um, the insights into both the device and, uh, and into the network to uh, help prob problem solve and to make sure that your network is, uh, and devices are, are working to the best possible uh, combination. We're happy to answer your questions, so please uh, reach out to us if you're interested in more. Thank you.